Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back through your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about Ripple and XRP as was the vast majority of crypto and finance. With that being said, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are out there in the world. We have been witnessing a paradigm shift in the global financial system for a while now, and it has been taking some time. And I will admit that it does get frustrating to hear about how these things are happening, yet there's no major moves actually happening. But don't worry, because guess what? In this video, I'm going to be going over a lot of the information that is going to prove to you that this is happening. Things are moving rapidly in the background of things. So first and foremost, I welcome you to my post just recently on X. In order to usher in the new system, they must destroy the old system. Now, this is a very straightforward uh, post. And in my opinion, this is what we are witnessing. The reason why is because going all the way back to 2008, I don't think that we really bounced back. I think that they just just truly inflated the system and made it seem like everything is all good and they just kept running the Monopoly show. I'm not the only one that thinks like this. In fact, ITM Trading put out a great post and this is Harry uh, Dent Jr. And we actually see him saying, this isn't erasing the entire boom since the early 80s. It's just erasing the artificial bubble since 2009, which was not even a natural growth period. It was artificially created. And again, I 100% agree with this. Listen closely to this video. And they're talking about real estate, by the way. But I personally believe that's the entire global financial system. Well, bubbles only do one thing. The first bubble in stocks was 2000. It crashed 78% in the NASDAQ, the bubblier stocks, in a boom, which was going to continue, as my indicator said. This time, you know, it, it's got to crash 86%, the S&P 500, just to get back to the last low in early 2009. This isn't erasing the entire boom since the early 80s. It's just erasing the artificial bubble since 2009, which was, was not even a natural growth period. It was artificially created. And did you catch what he said there? It has to drop almost 90% just to get back to the lows in 2009. And we probably don't stop there. No, this is why the, the average individual will, will get completely wiped out with this move. But this is going to happen. They're, this is by plan. They want this to happen. Remember, even during 2009, right, where, where the bubble popped, guess what? The bankers got rich. They got richer. While the average individual got completely wiped out and got financially ruined. Now, beyond this, CPI. One of the big things that we really look at is how they are trying to manipulate us, right? Big shout to Kabaisi Letter. We actually have while CPI inflation is at 3.4%, inflation is much higher in many basic necessities. For an example, car insurance, 20.3% inflated. Transportation inflation, 10.1%. Car repair inflation, 7.1%. Rent inflation, 6.5%. Homeowner inflation, 6.3%. Hospital services inflation, 5.5%. Food away from home inflation, 5.2%. Both core CPI and headline CPI came in hotter than expectations. This is the first time since February of 2023 that both readings were higher than expected. For the first time since September of 2023, CPI inflation is back on the rise. Affordability is still getting worse. Regardless, markets will continue to hold on to the Fed pivot narrative. Dips are already being bought and the 10-year note yield just turned red on the day. Trade the markets we have, not the markets we want. Now again, big thing to mention here, I personally believe that the Fed might actually pivot in March. But we still need to be very vigilant and cautious because again, we are in unpredictable and unprecedented times. Anything can happen at any moment. I feel as though 
we need to make sure that we are thinking clearly at this current moment in time, especially as we do have a lot weighing in on us. I believe that crypto, stocks, a lot of these things are going to experience that big boom to the upside, but then what comes later is max pain. After that, we will start to see the rollout of the new system. We're already starting to see it happening around the world, by the way. But also, Zero Hedge. Can you believe that these posts are just 10 days apart? That's right. 34.001 trillion. 34.001 trillion. January 2nd. Three months after we hit 33 trillion. Two months, or sorry, two years after we hit 30 trillion, and four years after we hit 24 trillion. We are now exponential. 10 days later, 34.059 trillion. 35 trillion by June, going off of what we have been witnessing since around September almost. This is unsustainable. This is why your savings are getting eaten alive. The Fed, the central bankers, they want you to lose money. Even the Fed, they're trying to get us back down to 2% in terms of inflation. That's their goal. They want you to lose 2% on your money year over year. So why the hell are we seeing people stacking their dollars as if it's the greatest currency Ever. It's not. It's a scam. This is a monopoly system. And it's unsustainable. And it's going to get to the point where you can no longer turn back. And I feel as though we're already there. But the big problem is, is that this will have a very, very rough time. And when I say that, I truly believe that all of these people... And I'm sure that you guys could probably see this as well. That are going out and buying new things, buying the flashiest things, spending their money, not, not having any backing to them at all. Investing is such a crucial thing to do, especially investing into gold and silver and beyond that, diversifying into crypto, things like that. Those individuals that don't have any investments, they're just blindly spending those are going to be the people that are getting wiped out completely. You need to prepare for th something like a black swan event because that's exactly what 2008 was. That's what prior massive bubble pops were. I believe that we're gearing up for this. A lot of people think that we turned around. Everything's all good. And again, remember what I've always said in the past, right? I always repeat this, this uh, phrase because it's so crucial. Everyone will have a great time when getting out is best. Everyone will be having a terrible time when getting in is best. It's the same exact thing with banks. They want to lend to you when it's not the time to go, go out and get a loan from the bank. They won't loan to you when the time is right to go and get a loan from the bank. That's when money becomes crucial to have. Cash is king during those times. But beyond that, right, even percent, right, this is total public debt as a percentage of GDP. Guys, we're at 120 percent. This is this is insane, to say the least, right? This is the number one reason why we look at this and say something extremely scary is coming. Something extremely scary is coming because guess what? They need to reset the system. They need something to happen. That something happening is ushering in CBDCs. Backed with gold, issued out on permission DLT, blockchain technology. And again, this is not me to, that, that's not me skewing the narrative. We already are witnessing this. The IMF, the World Bank, the BIS, all of the major central bankers, they're moving heavily on this front. While they print the fiat system into oblivion, essentially, and cause as much chaos as they possibly can around the current financial system. 
They're pushing it to its max potential. This will only lead to a significant crash and something breaking. And things already started to break back in March and April of 2023 with banks going belly up. But also, for those out there saying, oh, it's the Democrats, we're going to get a Republican and they're going to fix... No. Both sides are terrible for us. And they're all playing a role. I have always said that politics, it's the best. It's the best tool for them to separate individuals. People are far too emotional when it comes to politics. Both sides have not fixed a single single thing. They have done zero for us. That's why all these politicians are extremely wealthy. And again, they can't come back down to our level because they don't get it. They don't understand it. Wall Street Silver put out a post saying the government is spending crazy amounts of money. They are using budget gimmicks to pretend they are making some cuts, but they are not. It is full speed ahead with deficits way over $2 trillion per year and government debt likely to reach $37 trillion by the end of the year. Both parties are doing it. The Republicans won't cut either in terms of spending. In 2023, the federal government spent an astonishing $50,000 per household. Instead of fighting for Congress to get a handle on its spending addiction, leadership is using budget gimmicks to claim that it has made cuts and kicking the can down the road yet again. And remember, right, Janet Yellen, she wants to print upwards of all the way to $50 trillion. Think about this, right? We're at 34.059. She wants us to get to $50 trillion by 2030. That's what she said. And she even said that, oh, it's no concern at all. It, and it, they even questioned her. Do you think that this is sustainable? And it's like they're living in a fairy tale. Because again, they already know that this is all fake. It's all made up. It's all trash. And they already know that the new system is coming as well. But what's even crazier about all of this is the Fed. The Federal Reserve admits it lost $114 billion last year. That is just the losses from paying commercial banks to park money at the Fed, reverse repos, reserves. That number doesn't even reflect potentially another trillion plus in unrealized losses on their bond portfolio. Of course, the Fed won't actually go bankrupt. It'll just stop paying its profits to the U.S. Treasury, effectively converting every penny it loses into taxpayer losses. As always, with the Fed, heads they win, tails you lose. Check out this video that got posted by Peter St. Ange over on X. This is something crucial to note. Fed reports its largest loss in history, $114 billion in a single year. That would be the third largest bankruptcy in American history, and there's still another trillion plus in unrealized losses. Who will pay for it? You and your children. Check this video out. It's about three and a half minutes long, and this gives you everything you need to know about the Fed and what's really going down. The Federal Reserve just reported its largest loss in history by far, but don't worry, you'll be covering it. A few days ago, the Fed announced its preliminary 2023 financial statements. Note these are not audited results. We have to take the Fed at its word. You may recall Ron Paul's decades-long campaign to audit the Fed, which failed since the Fed is an unconstitutional racket who answers to nobody. As Murray Rothbard noted, the Fed actually has less oversight than the CIA. At any rate, even with the Fed grading its own homework, last year it reported an operating loss of $114 billion. To put that in perspective, it would be the third largest bankruptcy in American history, just behind Lehman Brothers and Washington Mutual in 2008, both ironically also caused by the Fed. But of course, that's the losses in a single year with much more to come. So how did the Fed lose so much money? Some of it comes from their paying Wall Street to park money at the Fed, which they do to hide inflation and because they like sending money to Wall Street. But the bulk of the Fed's losses are because they printed trillions to finance COVID lockdowns, used those trillions to buy bonds, mainly government debt. And then when they panic hiked rates to try and choke off inflation, bond prices collapsed meaning the Fed's pile of $9 trillion worth of bonds started losing money hand over fist. 
In fact, estimates of unrealized losses, meaning money the Fed has lost but hasn't yet fessed up to, could be well over a trillion dollars at this point. Of course, those unrealized losses don't come clean until the Fed sells the bonds, which they do either because the bond matured, so bonds have fixed times like 90 days or five years, or because the Fed pawned them to try and soak up inflationary dollars called quantitative tightening. Now, last year's 114 was a bit of both, with another trillion plus to come so far. So what does it mean? In the near term, nothing, the Fed ignores losses because in a pickle, it can just print the money, converting it into inflation. Longer term, though, every last penny the Fed loses is going on the taxpayer tab. The reason is all those losses cancel the money the Fed is supposed to be paying Treasury every year. These are called Fed remittances, and they're the profits from printing money and lending it out, essentially a licensing fee for counterfeiting. Those Fed remittances had been running about $80 billion a year, but now they will be underwater for potentially decades. It's worth noting this is fresh territory. The Fed never before turned in a loss until 2022. Now it will be losing money until our kids are grown. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained.com. The now, there you guys have it. Now, beyond this, right, you might be questioning, well, where does XRP come into place? Where, where does Ripple come into place? Where does crypto come into place? It's very simple, right? What's kind of crazy is we are watching some of the largest holders out there. And I'm talking about the big players. We're not talking about, you know, we're not talking about the small tier retail individuals that are worth billions of dollars. No, we're talking about individuals like Larry Fink that are behind companies like BlackRock that don't lose, by the way. They are the ones to focus on. Check this out. XRP Daily posted this. The extremely wealthy are the biggest holders of the new system. Watch as they deflate the old system and inflate the new one. Check this out. You don't want anybody to make money if you're trying to hollow them out. So you right. first inflict immense economic hardship on them so that the necessary bull market that has to happen sees minimal participation by individuals and the corporatocracy is the primary participants and the originators of the token. So the extreme worldly wealthy, the trillionaires of this world are not going to allow themselves just to be broken down to 10 million because the debt markets are collapsing and they hold all the debt. They have seeded the new system and they are the, the big holders in the new system and they're going to inflate that as they deflate that. So it'll be directly proportional and they will be absolutely maintaining and expanding their wealth. And we're going to have a bigger hollowing out of the middle and surf them as the result. And that's the problem most people facing this crypto uh, bull market will have is they won't have enough skin in the game. They haven't mm -hmm. been making enough cash. They've had uh, spiking interest rates crush them. You and again, you know, this is 100% true. Like as we really look at what's been going on, Look at some of the large players jumping in on crypto. Look at some of the large players that have been in crypto for a while. JP Morgan has been running Onyx. In, it's private blockchain technology, and they've been running it for years and years and years. Now they're telling you, avoid crypto. There's no use for it. There's no viability for it. They are already here. The IMF has been around DLT and blockchain. Central bankers like Christine Lagarde have been around this space for a very long time. They know what's happening. They understand what's going on with this technology. Do you honestly think that all of this is by coincidence? We're seeing, you know, the, the traditional financial system going through hardship after hardship. Now it's in unprecedented times with debt skyrocketing to unfathomable amounts. They still want to print a ton of money. Inflation, they're giving us fraudulent and deceiving information around CPI and saying that, oh, all is well, even though they're just manipulating you into believing that everything's all well, while we know it's not. Everything that we have been witnessing for the last, give or take, I mean, hell, you can go back 10, 15, almost 20 years now, and you can see everything building up to this point. The pressure cooker is already on. We're just waiting for the lid to blow off. And that's exactly what's going to be happening with, with, with this unsustainable move that has been going on and brewing for a very long time to completely inflate this old system 
so that they can inflate the new system in terms of actually causing complete chaos around the old system while they build the new financial system on DLT and blockchain rails while guess what? The retail sector is completely blinded. They're uh, distracted by all of these mainstream headlines around, oh, who's the, who's the next Kardashian? Things like that. Like Everyone is blinded by nonsensical garbage that is surrounding them every single day. And it's all by plan so that they can be deceived, so, so that they can't see the big moves that are actually happening around technology and this revolution that's coming. So with that in mind, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe to notifications on. If you guys more free content, you guys more than welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. Also, for a limited time only, guys, NordVPN, 63% off right now, utilizing my link down in the description below, as well as in the comments below. $3.99 a month, guys. You cannot beat this deal. This includes incredible benefits, which we will go over here in a second. But this is the best in class VPN versus Express versus Private VPN and so many other name brand VPN services out there. You guys can't afford to leave yourselves unprotected in crypto. And when we look at the cost, here's the overall cost on the two year plan 9576 for the first two years. And this is an absolute steal versus what the original uh, plan cost. This includes a high speed VPN, malware protection, tracker and ad blocker, and just the standard package. If you want to move all the way up to the ultimate package, this includes a ton of information that you would most likely find very valuable because guess what? For $168 for the first two years, which is $699 a month, you get everything that the standard and the plus gets, but also you get one terabyte of cloud storage, next generation file encryption, but then this is the best one. Identity theft recovery benefit up to $1 million in coverage and also cyber extortion protection benefit up to $100,000 in coverage. Guys, this is why NordVPN is the best in class. If you guys do want to go check it out, there's going to be links down in the description below as well as in the comments below. But with that being said, guys, thanks for watching. This has been Nick. Peace out.